Yeah, um, hi, I'm Eugene. So um, I'm an artist in, uh, in Singapore. I'm 28 years old this year. So um, let's start with some of my early works, which flashed just now. So this was a photographic work that I did in 2010. And then um, this, this actually made, changed my life completely. I was going to be uh, like a game designer, like working to be a game designer programmer in a big company or some sort like that. And then I made this, this picture uh, to leave photography behind because I was looking through my portfolio. People, uh, some of my friends knew that I did photography, but uh, and then they were like, hey, show me, show me like one of your works that, your best works. Then I flipped through, through my photography stuff and I realized that I do not have one picture that I want to show people. So I did this work and, and I left it there, 2010. And I, I went on to do programming. I was, I was really proud of this, but two years, nobody cared about it. On, uh, it was on the internet, nobody cared about it. Then suddenly one day, uh, it just went viral uh, on Facebook. So I woke up and then I saw 2,000 shares on my, uh, on my Facebook. Like, what, what is going on? Then later that day, it became, it became a bigger number. Then suddenly, uh, galleries were contacting me saying, hey, we want to see more. But the thing is, that was the only one. So <laughs> <laughs> then uh, the galleries was like, okay, never mind. Let's just show this one. And then after that, it has, uh, it's been two years and I've made two solo shows and more works have come. Uh, Mona Lisa. And uh, this year, I had, I had my second solo show at the beginning of this year. And there was a company who I've known for a while. They, they saw me at my first show. They decided, hey, let's feature you in my company calendar and I'll buy one of each of your works. So, and this is the calendar. So uh, being uh, back then when I, was in, when I was doing art, I was an art student, I went to various uh, museums and then this, there was a one particular one where I went to London and uh, it was called A New Perspective Show. And I went there, really excited. Oh, let's go and see a new perspective. So I went in. I was a little bit disappointed, but there were good works to be shown, uh, really bizarre works. But it wasn't what I perceived as a new perspective. So being a coder artist, I decided to do my own version of uh, what I, I felt was a new perspective. So, I, I made a pair of goggles. I made a pair of goggles. Uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't make them. I bought them from a, from a shop. It is one of those uh, remote control, um, remote control FPV, first person view where you can fly an airplane and then you put a camera on top and then you put on these goggles and you can see from that airplane. So I bought one of those and I decided to use them to change people's perspective. Uh, so this, there were three ways I, I manipulated those goggles and the first one was to let people see uh, from a CCTV point of view. So it's like a third, third person, this was what they saw and this, this installation was at Singapore Art Museum last year. It's been exhibited a few times before uh, but I think the most elaborate one was for a Singapore Art Museum. Uh, I have a video of what people went through. Yeah, so you can see this, this is what they saw. I had five cameras. It would switch every five minutes. It was at first like switching every one minute, but people were too confused. So, so five minutes would be, would be better. So this is a, like a quickened version. <laughs> <laughs> then there was a second there was a second method 
where you can manip where I change people's perspective. But this time it involved two friends, when where both of them I swap their vision. It sounds very simple, just swapping their vision. I see what you see, and you see what. Yeah. yeah. But um, it is actually very disorienting because you you turn your head, but you realize that it doesn't affect what you see, and then it but it but it messes up the other guy. <laughs> so in the end, you you have to really cooperate with one another, and and um, I wasn't there. But one of the gallery sitters told me, because this was, this was there for three months, I'm surprised my equipment survived, but this was there at, for three months, and uh, people were telling me there were quarrels, uh, <laughs> husband and wife were like pissed off with each other after, <laughs> so I'm really sorry for that, but hey. And then, hey. Ah, there and then there was the last one, and uh, this one I call the lizard vision because you know VR, right? A VR, the stereoscopic VR, you have you have different cameras, two two cameras that look straight to mimic what you see. But I I did something different where I have the goggles. The goggles actually show the same image on both sides. But uh, I decided that was not that was not cool enough. I I wanted to make them have two different images so that I can I can uh, mimic the VR VRness. So I, I bought two and combined them into one. I just opened it up and decided that uh, hey, it's actually pretty easy to to uh, solder together. So I soldered it up and taped it up like this. It looks like a mess now, but hey. So I put them at the front to mimic. Uh, VR, then when people put it on, they thought, hey, this is like a digital real life. Then, um, then I, that was just to test whether it worked. So it worked as, as a VR goggle for real life. Then I, what my intention was to split the cameras apart so that they look in both directions, like, a, like how lizards see. And then, uh, so you can see in the one, this thing that I'm holding, the camera, one, one of them is facing here, the other one is facing that side. So this was to mimic what uh, animals with this type of vision see. I, I put this on, I thought it was going to be really disorienting. Yes, it was, but after half an hour, I was okay with it already. So I, was, I adapted to this kind of vision. Uh, yeah, so dude.sg, that's, that's my website see more of my works at this website. But um, a funny story about, about uh, when I purchased this domain, uh, this was about three years ago. When I got this, I was so surprised that it existed for my purchase. I was like, what? Nobody else bought it. So with, within the next week, I bought 56 other one worded .sg domains. <laughs> and, uh, Engineers, I, I missed that one out, but <laughs> I, I bought these, all these domains, so they all belong to me. Uh, and what I did with them was I put them on webart.sg to let anybody adopt them for free and do whatever they want. Because I, I didn't want to be just squatting on them and doing nothing, right? So at the end of the 2013, I had 20 websites of people's creativity, and I wanted to show them, show them some place. So I had some connections in the in the art world. Being since I already stepped into the art world, and people are showing me already. I went I went around galleries. Hey, do you want to show my project? And then they were like, Oh, this is great, but nobody would buy it. So and they need to pay rent, right? Their physical galleries. So in the end, uh, me being a uh, I know coding. So I decided, hey, I have all this virtual space, right? And um, I decided to make a multiplayer gallery where people can log in. And uh, I have gallery.sg, so I decided to adopt it myself. And I made a gallery where people came in and they, have, uh, they, are, they adopt a male, female character and they walk around and look at, look at uh, the art from the websites that were made 
from the domains that I bought. So this was from the opening. The most viewable was at the opening. After that, I was pretty much dead already. <laughs> yeah. And after, after this project, this was 2013 already, I, I went on to further gallery.sg to a second. Oh, before that, I have, to, in relation to VR, for that particular show, I had VR enabled. Uh, so it worked with the Oculus Rift, and some, anybody could go in with the option. It was really fun to see my creation in, uh, in vir a virtual reality, but nobody came in with uh, the VR option, so I guess it's not there yet, because nobody has the equipment. So the next project I made, I just excluded it, because it was additional, it was on the web. It was on the web. People needed to download the, the game, so I just excluded that feature altogether, so that I can have less less uh, less megabytes for people to download. And I've, for the next show, I worked with a curator, Stephen. He he's there. Yeah, I've I've known him for a long time. A uh, funny story is that I, I met him about nine year, nine years ago. And then he was he was he was going around making selling this uh, software game making software. And back then I wasn't into into gaming yet, into programming yet. So he was selling this software, and I was I was just helping him do the do illustration. I was into art. Yeah. Then nine years later, I decided to he became a curator, and I decided to work together with him again. So we, we, this, this show is ongoing. So you go to gallery.sg, this is the show that you'll be seeing. Okay. Yeah, these, these projects, if you are wondering, these are all black hole, I call them black hole projects because I put in money, I put in effort. There is, there's no money, money gain for me. It's just like, really, I'm just doing it for the fun of it. And it's, I'm really lucky that I do not have to worry about about uh, finances, I'm, I'm good there. Because with my photography, with my art, just money comes in for, from various places. So uh, I'm really lucky to be able to do that and do stuff that, uh, that I wanna do. So after all these projects, right, um, suddenly I got a call from the Supreme Court. It's like, oh, all this, all this radical stuff that I'm doing is finally catching up to me. I'm like, hey, uh, hey, uh, Eugene, uh, is this Eugene we're calling from the Supreme Court? They were like really serious. So I was like, oh shit, is it my downloaded movies or something? <laughs> I confessed everything. But uh, hey, uh, no, actually we want to work with you to do a virtual gallery. Uh, they, you know the old Supreme Court building, right? Uh, it was is going to be the new National Gallery. They wanted to preserve that as the old Supreme Court, like historically, but they could they couldn't do that in a physical space. So they wanted to engage somebody with the skills to do that. So uh, they called me. They like, oh, okay. Uh, how? So I, I went down to the Supreme Court for a meeting, and I've been going down there every other month. So um, they wanted a project that was on the Apple, iPhone and Android. And at that point, I've never done an Apple or Android app. So on the phone, I was like, so you want an Apple and Android app? So I thought for a while and I told them, OK. <laughs> I knew, I knew the theoretically how to do it, but I've never actually done it. But to today, it's already on the Android and Apple store, if you know what to look for. Oh, Supreme Court. And uh, it's, uh, it's still in the beta phase. And uh, yeah, this is screenshots of the inside switch. I, uh, although I am a 3D modeler, I recognize that there are other people who are better than me. And since I quoted them a huge budget, uh, I had to hire other people who were better. So 3D modeling, I hired someone else. 
and also for sound, uh, the, my sound guy is here, Jeremy. Uh, if he is the go-to guy for sound for games. So if you, if you want to talk to him, talk, he's, he's here. <laughs> so uh, after getting, I've been, it, it, was really, it was really funny to, to be paid for something like that because I've always been doing projects like this and just expecting nothing. I just do it for the fun of it. And so far, they have paid me 60% of, uh, of uh, everything I asked for, and I've been rolling in money already. So and then, um, so it comes to another, another point in my life where suddenly my family decides, hey, actually, you're getting some money, right? Why don't you pay the bills? Then, because, <laughs> And then they'll say, hey, because uh, you're the one who is staying at home all the time, right? Because I, do, I don't have a full-time job. I just do this. I just do me full-time and then uh, at, at home. So I'm like, okay, okay, why not? And then I saw the bill. It was, it was crazy. Um, um, it, was, it was a crazy amount. So I told them, okay, now on, nobody use aircon. And then they just laughed at me like it was the funniest thing and continued turning on the aircon. And then uh, I decided, oh, this is not, this is not cool. Because when, when I have to pay for something, I, I decide that I want to reduce it. Because I'm a very minimalist guy. Even at, when people come to my room at home, right, they, they think, oh, you have such a huge room. But it's actually because I get rid of everything I don't need, so I'll just like throw, I'll easily throw away anything, like uh, gifts from people that I don't use, like, sitting there for two years, gone, that kind of thing. Uh, and I'm very organized, so my code, when I code my games, it's also very organized. Um, so I decided that I want to solve this problem where we're paying so much for electricity bills. This comes my uh, next project which I want to, which I'm very interested in because suddenly I have to pay for bills. Uh, solar power, because uh, the place that I stay, actually in Singapore, the rest of Singapore is like full of sun. And whenever I get to my car, it's, it's so hot, right? Someone needs to harness that energy. Why, why, not my, why not me to reduce my power bill? So I've been talking to several solar power view, getting to know how it works. And I have a habit of jumping different genres like photography, then suddenly doing games, then suddenly, now this is the next one that I'm going to jump to. So in October, I will be going to, going to a factory in China to work with some solar, uh, solar panel people and then see what we can come up with. Because so far, solar, power, solar panels has been expen is very expensive to install. And you only see like the returns after like four years of paying bills. So that's n that, that is not my idea of uh, saving, saving. So I want to go there and see how it works and then do something inexpensive so that we can empower people like me and you to, to reduce your power bills. And this is really like the source to I mean, reduce the overall, overall uh, cost of living. And, and the cost of living is, is really crazy these days. Like, what, like, I have a story, I was in, in New York early this month, and then uh, I was driving from Washington to Boston, but I got tired, so I decided to rest in New York. Uh, I, I've been to New York before, so um, I didn't really want to get out that night, but when I was going to New York, I was stopped by the police because in every state, right, you can turn right on red except New York City. And I did not know that. So I turned right on red. I just happily turned right on red. And then there was a police car right be behind me. And then he's like, oh, uh, give me a break. I told him, give me, uh, uh, come on, give me a break. Uh, I, I'm new here. But nope, he just gave me a ticket. So 200, I think it was 200 US dollars. So I was in the hotel, I was furious, like what? I decided to, and I was early in New York, so I decided to, okay, I must get my money's worth. I looked around uh, on Meetup, 
to, uh, and then I saw this meetup where it was gallery hopping. Then I was like, okay, gallery hopping, let's go to that uh, to at least get some inspiration in return for giving the police $200, right? So I went to the, get, uh, to the meetup and it, apparently it was op a gallery opening, opening night for several galleries. And gallery opening night means free wine. I was knocking it back like a champion. And then we were hopping several galleries, right? And uh, at the fourth gallery, I was already so wasted. And then there, were, there was this group of guys who were hitting on me. And then I was like, I'm straight, but I'm, I'm really okay with, with, uh, with gay people. I am LGBT supporter. And then uh, they were hitting, uh, they were, at first they were, they were okay. They were like, hey, uh, in the friendly gestures. Then after that, they were, they were touching my backside, trying to kiss me. And then, oh man, this, this is getting too weird. And I was super wasted already. So I decided, cannot, I run away. And then, and then being super wasted and running is not a good idea. So I ran around the block, I, it was all cool. I was like, okay, they don't know where I am already. And then the moment I stopped, I was like, oh, I need to sit down because I'm tired. Sit down, and then I was vomiting all over the place already. And then, uh, the, then people walking by were like, oh, shit. And then I think almost immediately, there was this couple who I didn't see because my eyes were closed, came to my aid. They're like, hey, are you okay? And then after a while, they, they said, okay, we need to call him an ambulance. Then I was protesting. I was like, no, no, no. But I think they, they just heard rubbish from me because I was vomiting and everything. Then the ambulance came and I woke up in the hospital the next day and I took this picture. So, um, yeah, it was, it was like a regular night, right? People get drunk. It's, it's normal. So uh, I, go, I got out. I wasn't even in a ward. I was in a corridor on, a, on a, one of those pushable bits. Then I went, they said, okay, please go to the counter before you leave. You can leave now, but please go to the counter. And then they asked for a bill. This was the amount. <laughs> Crazy, right? For an ambulance ride. So I, I truly believe that energy would lower the cost of living. So. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>